Welcome to episode 27, can you believe that, of Gary's Graveyard Gramblings. And here we are in the south side of the cemetery today. And look, can you see how beautiful and green and verdant the lichen, the moss is everywhere. Quite beautiful actually, although the ground is very, very wet. Now, oh, here's Margaret's bench. Now we're not going to stop there today. We're going to go back around past Count Dracula for a reason. So we'll say hello to um, our little friend over there. I can't remember what her name is now. Alice or something, don't know. Any roader round to the back of the cemetery and uncovered for the first time in many years are a number of gravestones which have been uncovered at this part of the cemetery and some of them are very old indeed. Um, there's one up here somewhere, although they're a little bit illegible. That's 1819, that one there. Um, that one, just a paving stone probably, that's um, eight at 1770 something, 1760 there. And um, over here, we've got just a couple of rather poignant letters on there. There's 1730, 1730, I think that is there. And then it goes up a little bit round there. We must just play due deference, although the sunshine is out, so I'm safe to Count Dracula. Uh, who's behind there and the Brides of Dracula who are in that one at the front there and as we go round to my usual position by John Gilbert's grave we must say good morning and bow to Mr and Mrs Owl there are the privileged over there in their concrete bunker and of course we are going to go round the gravestones to Mr John Gilbert here he is and here am I hello now, well, it's been a while. This is version two, because I cocked up on the last one. I called it episode 28, but it's not. It's episode 27. Apologies to me for being a silly billy. Um, so what's today all about? Well, oh dear, I have to breath. By the way, I am not ill. I've just walked one and a half miles to get here at a fair pace, let it be said. Um, so do forgive me if I sound a little bit out of breath, because I go like the clappers despite me age, currently the Tory party, and now I'm sorry to, to start on this, but there is method behind my madness, just stick with me on the world's least watched video blog. Um, to, it's a joy to watch the Tories here in England going down the political toilet of history in spectacular fashion. Would that Trump over there in America was doing the same? I think he probably is. It's just that the people over there who vote for him are so thick that they can't see what's going on. Fingers crossed that when I pop over to New York City in September uh, this year, um, I don't know what accent that was, but forgive me, Keith, um, that um, I'll still be safe because it'll be questionable once the revolution starts when Trump wins, as he inevitably will. Oh, what am I rambling on about? Well, it's a rambling, so... Um, but anyway, one of the comments in the um, papers over here was that the a forthcoming Labour government, which it almost certainly will be, will be taking us back to the 1970s. And of course, they meant that as a slur, whereas I thought it was fantastic because I loved the 70s, despite all the industrial unrest disputes and all the rest of the shite that went on in, those, in that decade. I was a glamster. I was a soul star. I was a reggae fan. I was a hard rock fan and I was a punk fan and disco fan. So for me, the 70s held everything. And I even liked the clothes. You should have seen some of the trousers that I wore. Waistbands that thick, loons that wide, and they really were fabulous times for me. So I don't mind that. And the other thing is, of course, that I've kept all my 70s records from way back when in a huge collection um, that's followed me around from flat share to house share all over the bleeding place, lugging these things around. And I'm pleased I kept them. Um, because they are like friends to me. They're like old friends. I'm probably showing you a snap, even now, of just one part of the 70s section of the LPs in the music room at Pease Moldier Towers. And I'm very proud of those. So why am I rambling on about this? Well, it's, I suddenly felt um, that the odd thing about this collection is, is not what's there, but what isn't there. 
So if I told you, for example, have a ramble, have a flick through my 70s collection, um, you'd be surprised at what's not there. There are no albums by Billy Joel. There are none by Thin Lizzy, none by Dire Straits, none by The Eagles, none by Eric Clapton and other luminaries of their time. And there's a bloody good reason for that. It's because despite my efforts at completing a fabulous collection of vinyl from the 1970s, I'm not so OCD to the point where I'm going to buy something that I don't like. And those bands have never done it for me. So I thought it would be fun in this um, edition of The World's Least Worst, Least Watched uh, video blog to go through my top five, and this has been tough, yuck, signal, uh, singles of all time. Ones that you might expect me to have loved, but which actually make me heave. So let's start. <laughs> <laughs> at number five, and at number five, well, I have to put in there, Come On Eileen by Dexy's Midnight Runners, which has annoyed, irritated, and um, dismayed me for years. I simply cannot get that folksy, yokel, farm, failed farmer look that they proffered um, at the time when New Romantics were blooming. So what that was all about, I don't know. And that moronic... Um, chorus. I just can't bear it. So, whereas I'm not averse to a floor filler, it's the toilet fillers that I don't like. So a floor filler like Tiger Feet, I'm there. I'm doing the old shoulder thing, the fingers in your waistband, and I love it. But Dexys Midnight Runners can do one uh, at number five. At number four has to be Hotel California by the Eagles, a record which is dreary, goes on for hours, a bit like me, and full of a lyric that I don't particularly understand. Um, I, I imagine that some people would do a slow dance to it. Well, I would strongly advise them to listen to the lyrics because they're not very, well, if you last that long, I never get that further into it. I just find it goes on and on. It's a dirge, so I can't be happy with that. And talking of dirges, at number three, I'm going to put Nights in White Satin by the Moody Blues. Now, again, this is a classic, um, a classic smoocher, I guess. Jesus Christ. I once went on a, I was doing some work over on the Isle of Wight. Do go there, American tourists, if you come. Isle of Wight is like the, um, it's like the Florida Keys uh, of Britain. <laughs> so I'm in this hotel, and uh, in this hotel, the evening's entertainment on the south side of the island was by a video jockey. Now that sounds vaguely pornographic, um, it, but it isn't. This this guy played videos of records that people in the audience had requested. And as it just transpired, the people in the audience were all over 60, all sat round the edge of the room, and it was pretty desperate in there. And on somebody had obviously requested Nights in White Satin, and I remember grabbing a beer and walking into the room to hear... <laughs> dreary and all these people with faces like smacked asses sat around the edge of the room and it was the very embodiment of god's waiting room um we're in a very appropriate place or i am in a very appropriate place at the moment to conjure up the mood for nights in white satin that evening there um it was truly awful and i've never been able to listen to it ever since number what was i at five four am i at number three yet i'm not sure uh, I've forgotten. <laughs> it's me age. Let's let's say number three. If it wasn't, who cares? Um, number three, I'm going to put The Boys Are Back In Town by Thin Lizzy. Um, now, they're a terrific rock group, hugely famous, hugely popular. But for me, it doesn't happen. I can't do it. Three notes of that record and Whiskey In The Jar, for that matter. No, I'm sorry. I leave the room. Um, but that's as nothing compared to the top two of my most loathed records. Um, at number, this was tough because these two I loathe beyond almost all description, but I will try. So at number two, I'm going to put uh, House of the Rising Sun by the Animals. Um, this is another one that, Jesus, when I, I only have to hear the first couple of notes. Ding, 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 ding,
I, I, oh, Pui, where is the off switch? That's my first question. Um, hugely famous, hugely popular. I have no idea why. But even the, the even the appallingness of that is as of nothing compared to what I stick at number one, which for me is the Nadia, the very bottom of the bottomness of everything. And that is Layla by Derek and the Dominoes. Those people that know me well will know how much I wax about this and how much um, I detest this record. Um, again, hugely, but Eric Clapton, widely regarded as one of the best guitarist, lead guitarists in the world. And, um, but this particular record, now there is a, if, as if the single version wasn't enough, there is an album version which goes on for about nine minutes and it is wailing out of tune. Sorry, I will not accept any other explanation of this. It is out of tune. Uh, it wails, it dirges, it lala, just dreadful. So that's number one. And if I ever go to a party of yours, which is extremely unlikely because I don't go to parties, as those of you that will have listened to the podcast, the wonderful Get Shirty podcast uh, by Hardman and Hemming over there in South, but do give them a listen. It's a hoot. Um, I don't go to parties because I'm not a people person. Do you know what I mean? I'm just, you know, I'm not anti-people. I just don't like them very much. And of course, that's with the exception of those gathered here within watching this this rambling. So I'm not likely to be at a party, but if I ever was and you wanted to get rid of me, just pop Layla by Derek and the Dominoes on and I'm gone. And uh, problem solved. And on that cheery note, I'm going to wish you all a fabulous day. And I shall be back with you for episode, the real episode 28, if I ever get round to it. And incidentally, did you know that I only read the other day that most podcasts don't go beyond nine episodes before they're scrapped? Well, F it. I've managed to do 27 of these and I'm still here. Whether you are or not is a moot point. But nevertheless, I've enjoyed them enormously. And I shall be back for episode 28 when I feel like it. Till then, salute.